to do veneer work, um, you can cut veneer with just about anything imaginable. And, and people ask me all the time, what's the best thing to get a kid started into in woodworking? A lathe. The lathe is a great tool to get somebody started on. I think a better way to get a kid involved with veneer or with woodworking is to get him involved with working with veneer. You see, veneer can be cut with scissors. So if you've got a child and you're wanting to teach them how to do something, you could have them just take a pair of scissors and they could cut out shapes all day long. And you could take a, um, a Xerox copy of a duck. And with one part of the wood, you can have them cut out the bill. Another color wood, you can cut out the feathers. Another part you can cut out the body and then the feet and then they can come back and put them all together like just like a jigsaw puzzle and there is their duck. So so then they can take it and press it and make a wall hanging or so it's really, really easy to cut. You can cut it with scissors. Uh, you can cut it with paper shears. You know the big old knife things that you could come down and you could cut with? Man, that cuts veneer perfectly. You can certainly cut it with uh, things like Stanley Utility knives. Uh, it cuts real well with that. You can cut it with X-Acto knives, which is, which is my tool of choice. You can cut it with chisels. You have... Um, Veneer saws. The thing about veneer saws when they cut veneer is, I mean, right now, it didn't do anything to me. But what people don't understand is a $10 saw, they do not come pre-sharpened. So right now, if you were to look at the, the teeth on this, they're blunt across the top. They're flat. And they're not going to cut unless they, they, they're more of a knifed edge. So in order to sharpen one of these, you'd have to unscrew it from here, take a file, and file half of it away. So instead of being blunt across the top now where the teeth are, we turn one side into more like a knife edge. Once you do that, it creates a, a few burrs. So you need to take a little triangular file and re-tip your teeth. But once you've done that, this thing, excellent. As a matter of fact, it probably would cut better than this. One of the problems with an X-Acto knife in terms of cutting veneer is as I cut, I only have the little tip in contact with the veneer. Just that one little point is making the cut. And that one little tip is usually influenced by whatever the grain pattern does. So I have to be really cautious when I use a, uh, an X-Acto knife in that I'm keeping it up against the edge of my straight edge. And I'll, I'll show you the technique for how we do that to keep it from wandering. The thing about a veneer saw is when you put it up against your straight edge, you could fall asleep while you're running the thing. It doesn't matter because you'll always have X number of teeth in contact with the wood. So veneer saws are good, but they won't work unless they're tuned up first. Uh, they won't work at all, uh, as you can see. For, for me, uh, whenever I do veneer work, I, I always work on one of these self-healing mats. I mean, you wouldn't want to try to cut on your workbench. It's not a very solid surface, and besides that, you cut into it too much. The X-Acto knife, the Stanley Utility knife, the chisel won't damage this at all. But when you go to the sawing action of this, it will damage a, um, a, a cutting mat. So uh, you're going to have to work off of a piece of MDF or something like that if you use this. They also have, for cutting veneer, a couple of other tools. Uh, keeping with the knife idea, you can buy a veneer slitter, uh, such as this. This works off of just a plain old everyday razor blade, just the kind that Grandpa used to have. Okay, and it's got a couple of little holes in it. And those holes fit into, this is the left-hand side, but you can see those two little brown spots there. It's got a screwed-on plate. So you put the, the razor blade on, and you put the plate over the top. And, and this one does have a blade in it. And now I could go up against my straight edge and, and again, knife cut the veneer. The knife is at a skewed angle, so you can make one pass, and you get more knife in the cut as to just a little tip. It is right and left-handed, so I could move this over to the other side if I'm left-handed. So, But this is an expensive little tool, probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 60 to 75 bucks. And, and most people, when they get into the veneer, you know, we all probably have an X-Acto knife at home, or we could certainly go get one for a couple of bucks. So this is a little bit more practical than this one here. And then my favorite of uh, all of the uh, cutting type of uh, knife systems is this one here. And it has, again, a little knife that drops down on the back. It's got a saw-like handle on it. And I can go through it up against the straight edge, and then it'll do an excellent job cutting. I have this knife lifted up because I'm using the other side, or the last time I used it, I used the other side. Almia made this. They've gone out of business since. And uh, this is a really clever little tool. On the other side, it's got two knives. 
and there's spacers in between them. The way it's set up, as I make a cut, it'll cut a perfect inlay strip, whatever width that I wanted at, which is just the coolest little thing. Um, and again, I could change those however I want in terms of their spacing. So, getting back to cutting veneer, you can cut it on any machine in the shop. I could cut it really, really easy on the bandsaw, on the joiner, on the table saw, on the drill press. The problem is, you just can't take a piece of veneer and go to the joiner and join it. Well, I can't go to the table saw and cut a piece of veneer. But I can if I pack it first. And by packetizing it, it just simply means to make it rigid. So by taking a bunch of pieces of veneer, sandwiching them between two pieces of particle board, and I put a couple of just clamps on here and tighten it down as tightly as I could. I've gone through and hammered in some staples or shot in some staples or put in some screws so that they are as far away to the outside edge and will do as least amount of damage as possible to the veneer itself. I certainly won't want them everywhere in here. And at this point in time, I went to the bandsaw real quick and just pushed it through and cut off all the fluff that was hanging out on this side. And I went back and went to the joiner and joined it. And now I could go to the table saw and cut strips. I could drill holes in it if I wanted to. I could go to the bandsaw and cut irregular shapes out. So you can cut veneer, but you've got to packetize it first or make it rigid before you do.